was left kind of as just that ice base south of uh, South America. But what most people don't understand, and this is critical, is that in 1947, the United States sent a war flotilla to the Antarctic under Admiral Byrd, uh, and it, it, it was called Operation High Jump. And it was to seek out and to destroy the hidden Nazi bases that intelligence agencies had provided them the documentation for. It wasn't a small thing, 13 ships, 4,700 men, and the state-of-the-art, if you will, advances in U.S. weaponry. The bad news is we got our, our rear ends kicked, and in 1947, it was actually February, things started in August of 46, ended in 1947, Admiral Byrd came back and reported to Congress what had happened. The Russians, incidentally, had made a video, because they were spying, of our aircraft encountering flying saucers. Now, in order to put this into perspective, two of the heads of NASA, which is our National uh, you know, uh, Aeronautic and Space Administration, were former Nazis. Very prominent science. And when you deal with Hermann Oberth and you deal with, uh, oh, Dr. Warner von Braun, and uh, Hermann Oberth's famous statement is, think not that we Germans were brighter than any other scientists. We had help from other worlds. And that's interesting because, you know, when, when Admiral Byrd came back, he had the first Secretary of Defense on his side to tell the American people what was really going on in the Antarctic. And that was Forrestal. Forrestal, again, was the first Secretary of Defense. And when he was wanting to tell the American people what they had found uh, through Operation High Jump and the advanced technology, he was thrown out a third-story window at Bethesda Naval Hospital. So when you're dealing with the Antarctica and you're dealing uh, with the history of the Antarctica, it is steeped in absolute, not only mythology and, let's just say this, mythological references, but in the 1500s, even the Piri Reese map showed Antarctica without ice. Now, that, that basically comes into total conflict with a modern uh, geologic time frame of glaciation. So what really is going down there? And here's the, here's the billion dollar question, probably trillion. Why are the world's religious leaders and the world's most powerful leaders going to the Antarctica? I don't think uh, uh, Kyrill, the Russian Orthodox patriarch, is going down there to you know just basically meet penguins. And uh, with no disrespect, man, someone or something, and it's both, has summoned the world's leaders, both political and religious, to the Antarctica. And I believe that based on Admiral Byrd's testimony, the testimony of uh, multiple generals, multiple intelligence people, I've been on talk radio 25 years, and I couldn't know what I'm sharing with your audience unless someone told me. So I don't know everything, but I certainly know what they've told me in reference to Antarctica. And the, and the interesting thing is, is that even Francis Bacon in the 15, I'm sorry, 1627 in his New Atlantis was referring to ancient technology that, by the way, he didn't get to finish the book, but ancient technology that was astounding from genetic engineering to skyscrapers, uh, laser weapons. I mean, this is in, you know, 1627. So we, what we're dealing with is the idea, Greg, that there is an advanced civilization. Now, I want to clear up something. There are those who believe that we were uh, created by aliens. I'm not on that, uh, on that bandwagon. The Anunnaki, I'll make this easy, just the simplest statement. The Anunnaki are the fallen angels. That's who's repra represented in all the Sumerian uh, presentations on their stele on their drawings and their clay tablets, everything. But the Bible talks about a fallen angels. Now, why is that so important? Because we're dealing with the time where we're going to see a universal religion, a universal government, and a universal monetary system. And now, you know, after we watch Davos, now everybody wants to take the cash away from America. Obviously, they're doing a trial run in India. But it's as if, all of the world's leaders, and especially the most prominent religious leaders, are having to answer to someone who has 
superior uh, intellect, superior intelligence, but a very, I would say, dark and sinister future for the world. In other words, global control of everything and everyone. So that's who I believe is uh, summoning everyone down there. Now, listen, why are these people here? The biggest announcement that's getting set to come, the Vatican is already uh, prepping the way that if there are aliens, can they be baptized? My answer is no, they're not created in the image and likeness of God. My answer to those that say, well, God's a figment of your imagination, the aliens created us, then my simple statement is who created them? And for the record, we're talking about civilizations that even according to the Sumerian Table of Kings go back 225,000 years. So I deal with a lot of, uh, I would say, pre-Adamic stuff, meaning prior to the creation of Adam and Eve 6,000 years ago, there were civilizations on the earth that also got into genetic manipulation and Interestingly enough, so much of it goes back to Antarctic. So I believe it's almost like, if you will, 2001 Space Odyssey. They're not just finding the obelisks on the moon. They're finding the entities, and in my opinion, they're fallen angels. And, and let me make something clear. Fallen angels, because they are of a different uh, level of creation, don't die. You know, So we're talking about things that can pass on hidden, esoteric, occult knowledge, and have to the adepts, those who basically buy the lie, get to do the, uh, if you will, the uh, up, uh, they, they're, they're brought up to speed on what are called black physics. Black physics are what exists beyond the uh, PhD level of physics. And we're seeing it in CERN. Uh, I think what uh, is so critical for people to understand is as more activity takes place in CERN, the occult rituals associated with it are so in your face that, you know, you can't dismiss this kind of stuff anymore as being, oh, the rantings of this fringe or that fringe. Something is happening, and the Antarctic is critical. It's my contention that because of the advanced technology of the uh, Third Reich, and especially their pharmaceuticals, and their finances and everything, that they went under the ice, so to speak, and that they pretty much came into contact with beings, sentient beings, which obviously Hermann Oberth and, and uh, Werner von Braun and others have made reference to so many times until they passed away. So all this stuff is a matter of record, and when you put all the records together, it points to this. There is some entity or group of entities that are sentient. That means obviously the thing.